Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, November is Military Family Appreciation Month, but first, Fort Meade observed Veterans Day on Thursday at the Fort Mead Museum. This year's program featured a visit from Congressional Representative Donna Edwards of Maryland's 4th District. Uh, it's a serious commitment to both honor our veterans on Veterans Day for your commitment and for your service, but to not forget that there's a day after Veterans Day. Uh, and so I look forward to continuing to represent the good people of the 4th Congressional District, and most especially uh, to rep represent all of those who are our active duty uh, military uh, and to make certain that um, that we represent, continue to represent and support the interests of our veterans and their uh, and their family members. The event's guest speaker, Harold Rothstein, Korean War veteran and father of Fort Meade's garrison commander. And every once in a while I, it enters my mind that these were lives that were cut short, but they didn't mind it. They were there doing their job, they were there doing it for a purpose. I want to really sincerely thank all of you. I want to give, say what an honor it is to be amongst all of you, especially you that are in uniform now and are wearing the colors of our country. God bless you all. Thank you. In a related story, you may or may not know that hundreds of thousands of soldiers were processed through Fort Meade during World War II and the Korean conflict. Earlier this year, during renovations of Building 249, a World War II era barracks, some personal letters were found lodged in a wall. The Fort Meade Museum's Dave Manning led an effort to return the letters to the soldiers' families. This week, the last of the 11 letters is being sent to the Sweet family of Knoxville, Tennessee. They were found uh, in a building here on post. Uh, they were doing some renovation work and they tore the plaster down and they were found uh, back behind a wall uh, where they had fallen um, and had been there since uh, 1943, 1944. Um, we're not really sure how they got there. Uh, you know, they may have been on a shelf or something like that and fell off the back of the shelf and wound up down behind something and, uh, uh, and then they you know, got walled up inside the building. Yeah, we decided that since they weren't open, we would wait and see if we could actually contact somebody in the family, if you know, somebody was still alive that we could give the letters back to. And in that case then, since we did, it's appropriate for them to open it, not for us to open it. Right. You know, it, it was never meant for us. I'd, I, honestly, I'd like to go. I'd yeah. like to give it to them. Yeah, I'd also like to know what it says. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun. It'd be kind of fun to be there when they get it and open it. This is part of our role here in preserving the history, uh, uh, not only of Fort Meade, but of the, all the soldiers, especially all the soldiers that have served here at Fort Meade, that have passed through here. Uh, and this, uh, this sort of thing really personalizes it. Um, you know, a lot of people are impressed by the by the tanks that we have, or the helicopter, or the weapons, or that sort of thing. But really when it comes down to it, the history that we're preserving is not the history of the technology, it's the history of the people, the people that wore the uniforms and the service that they performed. That's what's significant about this. And the fact that we got, actually got something like this that, that really evokes that, really shows the, the personal side of, uh, of service in the Army and war too, uh, I think is very significant and uh, very happy to to be the recipients of this and be able to participate in this. In other news, each year the President proclaims November as Military Family Appreciation Month. Here's a brief message from the Installation Management Command. They inspire our service members and bring life into our military communities. They're strong, caring, and resilient. They don't always wear a uniform, but their service to the nation is selfless. This month, we recognize the integral role military families serve as they provide unwavering support to the men and women that protect our freedom. In November, join the U.S. Army Installation Management Command as we celebrate National Military Family Appreciation Month. In a related story, Army Community Services offers a wide variety of parent and family support groups. Single parents meet every second and fourth Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. at School Age Services on Reese Road. Families dealing with deployment meets the first and third Monday of the month from 5.30 to 6.30 at the Muse Forest Neighborhood Center. Dad's 101 workshop is held every Wednesday from 9 to 10 at the Army Community Services Building. Parenting with a Purpose is a six-week course for parents of children of all ages. They meet Wednesdays from 1 to 3 at Muse Forest. And we can't forget about the moms. Their support group meets every Thursday from 9 to 10 at the Potomac Place Neighborhood Center. For more information on parent support groups, contact Army Community Services at 301-677-5592. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.